Well, we have heard for years about the dangers of too much fat and too much salt in our diets, but what about sugar? Well, emerging research suggests high levels of sugar can harm the brain in the same way other organs are affected by type 2 diabetes. Tonight, as the season begins, the Fifth Estate digs into the surprising science to reveal the secrets of sugar. Here at Brown University in Rhode Island, they're doing studies they think should make a lot of humans nervous. This rat is perfectly healthy. Put him in a vat of water and he finds his way to safety every time. 5.2. Now, look at this guy. What he's been eating is the equivalent of a North American diet, complete with all the fats and sugars we regularly consume. He doesn't know where to go. His brain has been damaged. These rats were totally normal and then they turned into demented animals. They don't remember their learning after even a day. And um, as the challenge gets harder and harder, they fail more and more, just like a human with Alzheimer's disease. 36.2. In this lab, the belief now is that Alzheimer's is really diabetes of the brain, linked to insulin levels, which can be affected by too much sugar. Diabetes of the brain. The voice you hear there, Jillian Finley's, and she is my guest in studio here. Thanks for coming in as my your pleasure. season begins. It's fascinating. It's frightening, though, to listen just even in that excerpt, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It's sobering. It really is. So this is a study, as I said, we've talked a lot about other, you know, fat, and sugar, uh, fat and salt. Now we're looking at sugar. And what was it, Jillian, that said we need to investigate this further? Interestingly enough, it wasn't the science. We started on this story because we got access to and started looking at some documents that showed how the sugar industry over the last number of decades has gone about or what they have known essentially about the link between sugar and chronic disease and the efforts they've gone to to make sure that that link not be out there really? and that the sugar industry you make it sound like big tobacco well people are drawing that comparison absolutely you know they have done the same kinds of things that people accuse uh, big tobacco of doing uh, interfering with science belittling science trying to do whatever they can to um, to prevent regulation from coming in in any way I mean I don't know if you know this Heather but unlike with salt and fat there is in North America a daily recommended limit for both of those things any product you eat if you look on the label it gives you what percentage right. of that limit yes. uh, this product contains. If you look at sugar, there's nothing. Nobody has ever set that kind of a recommended level for sugar. Now, why is that? I think it's a very interesting question. And part of the investigation that is part of uh, your report mm. tonight. But So now that's changing a bit. Obviously, you're getting access to some of these things, and there's sciences is emerging and taking a look at sugar. And then what have you found that's of particular concern? Well, I think what we just saw was, was a, to me, was a huge, a, a huge eye-opener. But in addition to that, we're talking about cancer. We're talking about the way sugar, fructose in particular, can fuel tumors. That comes from one of the preeminent cancer uh, researchers in, in North America. We're talking about heart disease. We went and spent some time out at uh, the University of Cal California at Davis. What they're doing there is they're taking healthy kids, teenage, you know, college students, feeding them excess amounts of fructose mm -hmm. and look at the impact of that on their triglyceride levels, which is uh, an indicator for heart disease. In two weeks, Heather, on healthy kids with healthy livers, they are able to replicate some of the problems with what they call fatty liver disease and the triglycerides go up. In two weeks. In just two weeks. This is sober. Sobering is definitely the word on this. And is it yeah. just, you know, is it the common white refined sugar that we use? Is that the chief culprit? That's a great question because that's what people think. Oh, well, I don't drink have sugar in my coffee right. so I'm okay. We're talking everything, whether it's white sugar in your coffee, whether it's brown sugar in your oatmeal, whether it's honey, whether it's maple syrup, all of that stuff. High fructose corn mm -hmm. syrup, you've probably heard a lot about that. Yes. They use it a lot in processed foods. Chemically, it's all pretty much the same thing and it reacts the same way in your body. Well, you just said two words that are very key, aren't they? Processed foods. We don't even yeah. know how much sugar is in the processed foods yes. we eat. That And that is a big part of our story tonight. We don't know. I mean, I bet you it will surprise you when, you, when I tell you that on average you eat 26 teaspoons of sugar a day. Really? And I would say I try to limit it. I bet you do. But Most people do. But, but it is in everywhere. so many foods that we just don't know about. And, uh, and, and the labeling. 
you can debate whether it's on purpose or not, but the labeling does not make that clear to consumers. All and right. so it's, uh, yeah, it was quite a revelation. I will be glued to the television tonight, as I know many Canadians will. And listen, all the best with the season. Thank Thanks you for so coming in. To tell about uh, the special report and investigation that begins the fifth estate season tonight, the secrets of Sugar Jillian's investigation. And as you can hear, it is sobering and it is going to be riveting. 9 p.m. on CBC Television, 9.30 in Newfoundland.